I I'm at a loss for words with the performance of Quasi Adafo Mensa tonight. There's been the saying that's been going since his arrival in 2022, let Quasi cook. And I've always just said, what is he cooking? Bologna sandwiches? This dude crushed it tonight. I can't stress that enough. And I don't even think I'm prisoner of the moment right now when I'm saying this, at least in the 24 years that I've been following this team. This is the greatest draft that I've ever seen by this organization. Where do we even start? Going into this draft, the it didn't start for Minnesota until pick three. Can they trade up with New England? That was the big story leading up to this draft for the last several weeks. All right, Elliot Wolf, and he's just farting around, and he's just, oh, trying to drive up the price. But ultimately, what ended up happening is they went ahead and selected Drake May at pick number three. And it's, oh, man, oh, okay, whatever. But I just, I still maintained and i did the video earlier today that if you can't get your guy then okay build up this team for sam donald at least for 2024 and then something happened man after pick three when the patriots selected drake may it was all right you're gonna you're gonna have to maybe trade up you want jj mccarthy that's the qb4 you're gonna have to trade up with the chargers at pick five and the Chargers, they didn't trade back. They ended up taking Joe Alt, which is, I that's probably the, the biggest just really, that's actually, that's a lie. That's not the biggest really moment. That in terms of just, I, I get what Jim Harbaugh is doing. You already have Rashawn Slater, but I wouldn't have thought that they would go Joe Alt. I guess they're going to play him at right tackle. But then something happened. Pick eight, Atlanta. What are they going to do here? Uh, and not even what are they going to We weren't thinking about that they were going to make any sort of crazy type of move. They took a quarterback after just signing Kirk Cousins to what? Over $100 million guaranteed. They just signed him and they took a quarterback with their eighth overall pick. You remember all the protection that we were doing for this guy when he was in Minnesota? Kyle Sloter, oh, he's a super, he's a threat to, to Kirk Cousins. One mistake, and the fans, they're going to be chanting Kyle Sloter. So guess what? We're going to get the most non-threatening QB2 imaginable, Sean Mannion. We brought him back, what, two or three times? They took Michael Penix Jr. with the eighth pick, and I would pay money. I wish Netflix did a sequel to the series quarterback just so that I could see Kirk Cousins face in real time as they selected Michael Penix Jr. But it actually helped out the Vikings because if they are going to take a quarterback, I would think that they would take JJ McCarthy. He's the better prospect. They didn't do that. They took, in my opinion, the worst prospect, but okay, that's at pick eight. And then you get down, you, a couple of picks to where, okay, is any Denver, Vegas, are they going to trade up? Sean Payton, he's going to be super aggressive. Russell Wilson got rid of him. That was a disaster. You just got to, okay, maybe McCarthy falls to you at 11, or you got to block Denver from leapfrogging over you because they're going to take J.J. McCarthy. And at pick 10, that was owned by the Jets. The Jets traded down with the Vikings. Quincy Adolfo Mensa traded up, essentially boxed out Denver and Vegas to take their guy, J.J. McCarthy. They gave up virtually nothing. I don't have it here in front of me. I should have did a better job of getting this prepared, but whatever. They gave up essentially nothing. They gave up a fourth and maybe a fifth round pick to get up one spot to secure the quarterback of the future. So they did it. They got to get a quarterback. Their jobs are on the line, even though I didn't believe that. But it, it was from Diana Rossini to the local beat writers, it was raining down. Just, hey, the seat is getting warm. And if you don't get a quarterback, there's going to be hell to pay. 
traded up one spot to get going into this draft. If you're going to get JJ McCarthy, I would figure it's going to be trading up with Arizona or the Chargers. Involves 11 and 23. You get JJ McCarthy, bam, your night is over with. Instead, they trade up one spot, giving up essentially nothing, and they still had their 23rd pick. Two first round picks in this draft. You got your quarterback in the future of the future. And now, all right, it's it's a wait and see mode. What's gonna happen? I was arguing on not arguing, but just saying on the live stream, Byron Murphy the second or Johnny Newton, you get an A plus from me. Byron Murphy the second went 16th overall to Seattle. And I said, oh boy, oh, this is a little bit dicey because that's what seven more picks until you get to 23 johnny newton he's the next best guy ah that's going to be a little bit tough and then all of a sudden the vikings traded up again from 23 to 17 the very next pick i see the vikings logo hey a trade hat what how and i was worried i was so concerned that this was going to involve next year's first round pick this seems impossible how did you pull this trade off And do I still have it here? I do, actually. That at pick 17, with the Jacksonville Jaguars, they swapped picks. But on top of that, Jacksonville got pick 167 and a third and fourth round pick in 2025. Just like going from 11 to 10, going from 23 to 17, Kwesi gave up nothing. He didn't take my guy, the guy that I would have preferred, but you got arguably the best edge rusher in this draft, Dallas Turner. That's incredible. That the com- a complete 180 turn from getting fleeced yourself in 2022. Uh, this is the greatest Vikings draft of all time. Amazing. Quarterback of the future, and you address the defense. Two first-round picks. Don't pick again until Saturday, day three. Don't care. And think about this. You still have your first round pick in 2025 next year. With Before accounting for the Justin Jefferson. And that's another thing. If there was any sort of hesitation from Justin Jefferson and his camp. Hey, we got to find out who's this quarterback going to be now that Kirk Cousins is gone. It's been answered. I would think he's a bit more inclined to sign that extension for a guy like J.J. McCarthy because KOC has been singing his praises. That's going to get done. But you protected your first round pick next year. And on top of it, yeah, fine. You don't have a second, third, fourth next year. Who the hell cares? Because guess what? Before accounting for a Jefferson extension, you're going to have 100 plus, well, before accounting for that, 100 plus million dollars in cap space to work with in free agency next year. Quasi absolutely crushed this draft. I, I, don't, I, I don't know how to process this. That I went from, this got me, one more mistake. One more F up. And all right, end of next year, you got to be gone. It's amazing how much he has learned from his previous mistakes and the way that he did an about face where he went from getting fleeced to fleecing others, two different teams on the same night. Quasi Cook. I, I I don't know what else there is to say. If you're if you're complaining of this draft, I don't know what to tell you. You're you're just looking for stuff. Bonus got selected with the 12th overall pick. I find that absolutely amazing. But the Vikings, I can tell you right now, I'll do the official grade on the Vikings draft once it's all said and done. But it, when you talk about you don't have a pick until day three it's a crap shoot from that i mean you could say it's a crap shoot no matter where you're selecting in the draft i can tell you right now the vikings get an a plus this is the greatest vikings draft i have ever seen in my life